Good afternoon again, everybody. Yerba Buena Gardens, how are you feeling? I said, how are you feeling? Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us here. We are Yerba Buena Gardens Festival, and we have been programming these outdoor spaces, always outdoors, always free, and always the most excellent, freshest artists in the Bay Area. Raise your hand if you've been to one of our concerts before. Very, very nice. Raise your hand if this is the first time that you've been here before. Excellent, excellent. Well, welcome. We are so, so glad to have you here. We have been in this outdoor space for 22 years, and we are very, very proud of that. And every time that we open up this stage, we open it up with an acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone people, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. Indigenous communities have lived in and moved through this land over millennia, and indigenous peoples from many nations make this their home today. Please join us in recognizing and honoring their ancestors, descendants, elders, and all members of their communities. So I let you know that Yerba Buena Gardens Festival has been here for 22 years, but we are here to celebrate another big anniversary with one of our longtime partners and a partner that we absolutely love working with. Community Music Center is celebrating its centennial year this year. 100 years, people. 100 years of making high quality music accessible to people of all ages, backgrounds, and abilities. We are so, so happy to partner with them. We are very excited for this new work that they've commissioned. And to tell you a little bit more, please help me welcome the Executive Director of the CMC, Julie Ruleck Steinberg. Thank you so much, Christina. I so appreciate it. And thank you all so much for being here today. I cannot imagine a more glorious day to celebrate this incredible work that is part of our centennial celebration. I also want to take a moment to thank everybody here at the Yerba Buena Gardens Festival, Christina, and Linda, and Preston, and Marcelo, the whole entire team. Um, you are always so generous to our community, and we are incredibly grateful for it. I am so thrilled to have this amazing lineup of artists behind me. They have really created something so beautiful to celebrate our centennial with. So I wanna just start also by extending my thanks to all of you for being here, thank you. I wanna thank the Sam Family Foundation who helped to fund this endeavor. We would not be able to do it without them. I also wanna take the uh, opportunity to thank our incredible team who have put a lot into getting the word out about this. And there's somebody special that I wanna to thank today who has really been just a catalyst, a champion, an engine for these centennial commissions that we've done. And it's our program director, Sylvia Sherman. Everyone, please give her a round of applause. So yes, 100 years of music for everyone. That's what we're celebrating this year at CMC. And if you don't know us, I'm so excited to tell you that for our mission, we strive to provide music to everyone. So you can be a very beginner, you can be an extremely talented and experienced musician, we have a place for you. Some of these beautiful people up here teach at our school, so if you're inspired by what you see today, encourage you to visit our website at sfcmc.org. In our centennial year, our theme is reimagining the future. And as many of you know, one of our deepest commitments at CMC is to financial accessibility, and we do that through tuition-free programs, sliding scale tuition. And this year, thanks so much to the vision and the inspiration of Maestro Curtis, we've launched a new pro, yes, give it up for Maestro, y'all. We've launched a new program, the Black Music Studies Program. It is offered year round, it's available online, it is free of charge, and we want to introduce all of you to it. Um, if you don't have a program, please, there's plenty over there. We've got folks circulating them around. It has a lot of information in it. Um, but that program has also helped to sort of spark 
this beautiful collaboration that we're going to be sharing with you all today, A Song of Triumph. And I am so excited to introduce to you all the creator, the composer, the mastermind behind it. Everyone, please welcome to the stage Mr. Maestro Curtis. Thank you so much. Um, I am so humbled. I'm not, you know, a lot of people hear me talk a lot because I'm a lecturer and a, and a scholar and a teacher, but uh, I'm literally speechless right now and, uh, and heavy hearted because this is so special to have my family and friends, many of whom I've not seen for so long who came to champion this project. I just want to say thank you. If I don't get a chance to say it, because I might get caught up in the melee of things. You know, very difficult to tell the story in an hour, an hour and a half about a people and their struggle and their journeys. If you ever want to know anything about what people have gone through, in writing, it can be manipulated and changed. And we know this. We've seen narratives changed over and over throughout the years. But one thing you cannot change is the music. The music has always told the story of what people have gone through regardless of their ethnicity. You can go all the way back to the medieval, Baroque, Renaissance, classical, neoclassical era, romantic era, modern, postmodern, and you will always be able to identify what was going on during those times. It's a bit weird right now with what they're playing on the radio. But I will say this, if you really want to know the truth and I don't mean alternative facts, as we have heard over so many years, these past maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine years. But I'm talking about real facts. When you see a painting on the wall of a museum, it tells the truth about what was taking place during that time. And so with a song of triumph, this is our abbreviation. As I said, we can't tell this story uh, 500 hundred years of what eight people have gone through. As a descendant of slaves, it is my honor to present a song of triumph. Thank you. 
God. Love, God, joy, work. Love, God, work, joy. Love, God, work, joy. They were in the fields, peace, and then they came. Ima chuku o lu anguli. 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 Ima chuku o lu And then they were sold 
of the highest quality. What do you want to give for? I'm going to give 300. All right, I'm going to give 300. I'm going to give 200. Who'll do that? I got I'm going to give 200. I got $100 bid. Thank you, sir. 10, 20. I got 10 now, 20 now, 20 now, 10 now, 20 now, 20 now. Yep, 20 now, 30 now, 30 now, 30 now, 30 now, 30 now, 30. I got 100 now. Yep, 30 minute now, 40 minute now, 40 minute now, 30 minute now, 40. Now 50, 50, 50, 40 minute now, 40 minute now, 40 minute now, 40 minute now. What are you talking about here? Three thousand dollars if you have sound in the city. We're down here in the country and you got a chance for the last time. I got 140 bid, 50. I got 140 now, 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 Imagine being taken from your homes, from your deities, from your land, from your community, being uprooted and being taught their form of Christianity. It must be noted that Christianity made its way to West Africa during the first century. So now you could imagine what those slaves were thinking when they were being given this information, only to know the truth. Imagine being a slave, being bought and sold, growing up on a plantation with your future unknown, no hope, no way of understanding why you got in this predicament in the first place. Your family at any given time could be uprooted. You can be sold. And then there's a decree that says you can be free if you fight. 
if you are bright. Abraham Lincoln was a good old man. So they say. But was it really as they say? At this time, the South were becoming so powerful that the North thought that the South was becoming too big for their britches. They went into this land in a partnership. And the South was selling cotton and sugar cane to the world and becoming wealthy. So the North had to figure it out. I know. Let's make the slaves fight our battle. song from Howlin' Wolf and you thought that it, would, it was just a song that was created in the 60s. This song goes all the way back to slavery. For those of you who heard it for the first time in the 60s. During Reconstruction, Harlem Renaissance, the spirituals that were sing, that were sang and sung in the fields, that were created in what we call the invisible church. What would happen is that when we were indoctrinated our masters wanted to make sure that we couldn't read or write. But he did t teach Uncle Tom to read so that he could continue to keep his agenda going and that was to keep us down and to keep us 
in an understanding that whites were superior to blacks. As he taught him to read, he tore pages out of the Bible that represented revolution. The first revolution started in the black church. As we would show Massa one church when he was awake and expecting us to behave, when he went to sleep at night as a result of us putting something in his dream, we ran into the woods to have our own church to bring back some of our Africanisms, to bring feeling, to bring spontaneity, to bring a sense of self back to ourselves. That was known as the invisible church, the invisible institution. To come out of that experience, you begin to see barbershop quartets, minstrels, vaudeville. Here's one of the songs from that era. Till then, my darling, please wait for me. Now we're moving into the 1920s. Amen, Daddy? And once we get that keyboard going, everyone give the sound man a round of applause. If you don't notice, there's a lot of moving parts up here, but I do want you to show some love for the musicians. We'll introduce them later. Particularly my children's. My children's. You see them rotating instruments. Yes, I see you, Miss Mary, up there. <laughs> All right, so as we're waiting, um, hi, my name's Nola Curtis. My husband, Maestro Curtis, and that is his name. I've had people say, what an ego, calling himself Maestro. It means teacher, and his parents were teachers and musicians, amen? 
So that name he was blessed with or cursed with, he fell right into it. And he's an awesome teacher, singer, musician. You, he plays anything you put in his hands. And his children have definitely inherited that. And please, I want you to encourage Niall, who you just saw singing. He doesn't even like to sing. He's like, I'm a bass player. So please give it up more for Niall. See Niall? Okay, see Niall? Now you gotta sing a little bit more. He shook his head, did you see that? So it's okay, I'm just buying some time. Now I do, as we have some time, I'm going to introduce some musicians. Now we've got Tony Boulevard on. He's got a lot of instruments up there. We got soprano sax, is that a tenor sax? Flute. We've got two flautists there on trumpet and flugel. We've got Larry Douglas. Come on, Larry. And who you heard um, perform Little Red Rooster, Neil Stallings. Please stand up. <laughs> Neil Stallings now. If with, Let's see. Play with Sly and the Family Stone. Leon Patillo. Basically, if you come through the musician's community in San Francisco, you know Neil Legend is a, Neil Stallings is a legend, but legend should be his last name, amen? Now we've got Ken Little on keys. If we got any aspiring musicians out there, take down these names and look them up, please. Okay, we got Ken Little and we've got, who else? Other people, we got Tina Bryant. Tina Bryant representing the ladies. She'll be on keys later, you'll see her in a minute. And then we've got, Larry. I did say Larry. I said Uncle Larry. Oh, okay. Look, my daughter's like, don't forget Uncle Larry. That is Uncle Larry. And why the children can play like they do is because they were exposed to it. When they were little, they would hear my husband's big band rehearsing and they would just be playing in the background. And they somehow got it through osmosis. But a lot of work too, okay? So um, again, give yourselves a round of applause for being so patient with us. Larry, can you do me a favor? Can you play something for the people, you and Tony, as we're buying time, getting the keys ready? We did it! All right, let's do it, Daddy. Is it good out there? So far. So far. Got a little stride piano for you. So I'm going to try to do my best. Bessie Smith, Billie Holiday inspired piece, amen. While I'm feeling down and low, I know just where to go. I can find comfort in knowing that I live in the heart of a soul. Thank you. 
there. Woo! Thank you. Now, if we're going chronologically, after Bessie, you saw so many other singers and musicians. Now we're bringing to the stage our Duke Ellington, famous all over the world, Mr. Ricardo Scales. And he's going to represent the Duke, Duke Ellington. can interrupt me if y'all want to, but those two beautiful brothers right there, they both lost the use of one hand, each of them, Ricardo Scales and Maestro Curtis, they were told that they would never be able to play again. They proved you wrong, right? Amen? What I love, um, Ricardo, it was your right hand? It was his left. Maestro, it was his right. And the story with Maestro is, 
The doctor told him, you'll never be able to play the piano again. Maestro said, you don't have the last word. church. So I'm going to take over for my husband for I'm seeing. Because, you know, I, I like seeing you. I like talking to you. I feel like I can trust you. Amen? So we're going to do some church. <laughs> oh, okay. Important to point out, they say behind every good man is a good woman. I think that's ridiculous because women are generally in front, on the side, upside down. Yeah. You can't they're everywhere, and we can't get along without each other, and we thank our women for being the strength and the pillars of our society, because you are the unsung heroes that we don't talk about. And so this could not have happened without my wife. And I want to give you a bit of history here. As we're moving through this program, we actually twist this up around, but y'all charge it to our head and not our hearts. Um, I want to make a, a, just a quick observation here. Um, you know, many people think that when a person sings, brother, that he's singing like a gospel singer. They equate when they hear a brother getting down. Hey, hey, hey. They think that's gospel. But I'm here to dispel the misnomer that we need to stop lying and we need to stop lying in the church. The church is taking credit for something that it ain't responsible for. You see, 
during the invisible church and what we were given we created spirituals from those spirituals spawn first the blues the blues was first if you don't believe me read your history books read real history books because it is said that the white man gave us the blues and now they're trying to take them back. That's a joke, y'all. <laughs> what I mean by this is that when Thomas Dorsey, not to be mistaken with Tommy Dorsey, the great band leader, consummate American musician, and that's another thing. We need to pay homage to all of our American musicians, regardless of race, creed, or color. But we are here to give you the understanding that where they got it from are people that look like us. And when we give something, we don't take it back. We give it to share because of our love of humanity. And that's what real black humanity is. As I pontificate and articulate, Thomas Andrew Dorsey was a blues man. tried to go into the church after he had been experiencing a series of bad luck. And he figured, well, I must be on the bad road, on the wrong road. I think this reminds me of Paul on the road to Damascus when he got knocked off the so-called mule and saw a light flash he heard the thunder roar he said my God my God take me I'm yours I will change my ways this is what happened to Thomas Andrew Dorsey who was a blues and a jazz man who began to write songs, who began to change his heart. And when he tried to bring these songs into the church, the church said, you can't come up in here with that. That sounds too much like what they play over there in them juke joints. He said, that sounds like the blues. Yeah, it was the blues, baby. Every day I sing the blues. Hey. Whether I'm in a church house, whether I'm in the joke house, whether I'm on the streets, every day I live is my experience. And so when we sing about it, we're singing about what's going on, baby. Whether it's our relationship with the Almighty or whether it's our relationship with each other. It's all blues. It's all blues. Eventually, Miss Mahalia Jackson became his demonstrator of the music that touched the world. Some call that the first enlightenment. I call it the second enlightenment. And we got a third getting ready to come up here in a minute. Come on. Sing it like you mean it. Oh, my Lord, what a mighty good God. Don't get me started, we're gonna have church up in here.
let's give Mike Stewart a big round of applause. Any of y'all know something about the church? I said, do any of y'all know something about the church? Well, one of the things that you need to do if you know something about the church is get a realization that we have a reservation without the reserve of cancellation. I tell you, one by one, we're going home. The 1920s through the 70s brought this emergence of what we call the second enlightenment, 
black gospel music thrive and brought about a new hope, a new way of looking at life on an equal basis with our white counterparts. I am a man. We are human beings. Why did we have to say that? Shouldn't you know that? Some things are left unsaid. Yet, a people were treated as though they were not human. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal.
his pappy, Mr. Charlie, was a pilot way on Capitol Hill. Pushing pills, passing bills, every farmer's wheel. Well, they died just to keep him chill. Just to keep him quiet, just to keep him still. White rabbits falling, falling, falling. The red-eyed queen is coming. to y'all who born, came up in the 60s. That's off of our Curtis family album, upcoming album, right Sal? You're gonna be the first one to pick it up. All right, thank you all. Please give it up for the Curtis family. Them churns sure can get down, can't they? All right, that was our dedication to Sly and the Family Stone. Jefferson Airplane, you know when music you know when music was music, amen. Yes, Miss Dolis. All right. Now we have, I'm gonna call to the stage. She's gonna talk to you. And if you know her, Miss Dorothy Morrison, it's to experience her and her love in life. She's gonna talk to you a little bit, then we're gonna bring up some hip hop, because that's the order that we going in back in the 80s, then she's gonna come back out. Amen. Come on, Miss Dorothy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, happy day came in 1969. I remember when Edwin Hawkins summons me to meet him at rehearsal. And he told me, Dorothy, he said, I got a, a song I want you to help me with. He said it's called Old Happy Day. And he said, now this song might cause some controversy in the church because the church wasn't singing this type of music. He said, but we gonna try it, are you with me? And I said, yes, yes, Walter. 
and Edward, let's do that. But I want to let you in on something. Hold up, bring it, bring it down a little bit. I just want to show you how the real, how the old happy day in 1800s was. Edwin showed me, and it goes like this. Shh. Oh, happy day, da da da. Oh, happy day, da da da. When Jesus washed, da da da. My sins away. Oh, happy day. That was in the 1800s. Oh, happy day. He said, but Dorothy, we're going to change it. He said, we're going to call it progressive gospel. Progressive music. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he added a little funk to it. And he said, I'm going to add it. I'm going to fix it so the people will bob their heads. Yes. I said, OK, I got you. I got you. He said, I want them to sway their bodies. I said, OK, that's where you want us to go with no happy day. He said, yeah, I believe you can take us there. And I said, just play the music and I feel it, I feel it. Can you feel what he's talking about? <laughs> this was in 1969. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the sound of Oh Happy Day. And I said, what, how you want me to do it? He said, use your low voice. singing that song and the song reached all over the world and that kind of brought in hip-hop showing you how the music changed from 69 and it's on up today hip-hop came in yeah 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 I'm coming back Sing it for you, but we gonna hear a little hip hop. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah, yeah. She ain't done, so don't y'all leave. The best is yet to come.
Humanity just fight through the pain. The revolution won't be televised, televised, televised. Dream big, your fight is my fight. Dreams with your soldier, innovation, disclosure, disclosure, revelation. Free your minds, free our minds. Victory is ours. You win some, you lose some, but you fight another day. Rely on yourself. Success in abundance. Should we tailor for success? Victory, this is a song of triumph, 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 triumph. church so come on somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah come on let me hear you from Buena Garden sing hallelujah hey. we're so used to this music it transcends culture transcends age we have so much to be grateful for for the musicians for the vocalists of this age have traveled through the church. Maestro said it best when he cited the history of gospel music when Thomas A. Dorsey uh, played with Bessie Smith and, and then eventually with Mahalia Jackson. They threw him out of the New Hope Church in Chicago, Illinois because they said they didn't want that coon shine music. <laughs> but I come to tell you that music takes on many forms. And if you want people to believe something, set it to music. Put some music on it. Help people to understand that we've been created out of one blood. That's what God did. He made all men out of one blood. I don't know if you know it today, but you're sitting next to some kinfolk. They may not look like you, but the same blood. I wish I had some help out there. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. That this is a triumph song. 
song. It's a song that all of us can sing. It's a song that the angels cannot sing. Can you say triumph? I said say triumph. Say it again, triumph. You got the victory over whatever you're facing. You got the triumph in your body. Day, 1969, there was a family that attended the Ephesians Church of God in Christ in Berkeley, California, under the auspices of Bishop E. E. Cleveland, Walter Hawkins and Edwin Hawkins, right across the way presented a song that would transform gospel music forever. forever. And it talked about what a happy day it was when Jesus washed their sins away. And as they come to reenact and sing that song, I want you to stand up where you are and to put your hands together. Glory to God for some of the greatest artists that have ever come out of music have been right here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Without including the importance of the church, I don't matter. I don't care what you say. It came through the church. Here's the original, Miss Dorothy Cole Morrison Grammy Grammy Award co-writer and singer of all.
Have a happy day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only. Bay Area, we got a lot to be proud of and what we have contributed to the world of artistry and musicianship and the singers, not just singers. All the musicians head to the front, please. We want all people who have participated in this up front. We want to celebrate ourselves, y'all. Celebrate the greatness that has come out of this Bay Area from the Jimi Hendrixes to the Janis Joplin's, Jefferson Airplane, come on, Credence Clearwater Revival. The list is so long, I'd be up here till next week. Let's celebrate us. Because I tell you, New Yorkers show now how to celebrate themselves. Everybody else knows how to celebrate themselves. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure to bring you a song of triumph. 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 Thank you very much. As I said, the story of black humanity cannot be summed up in simply an hour, hour and a half of music. We know that this is an ongoing project. This is the beginning of this project that is going to be part of a series. And we want you all to stay tuned because there's more to come. You'll see us fine tuning this project. So it's like a canvas. You start with a painting, and you come up with an idea, and then it continues to grow and evolve into something very beautiful. And certainly today, this was b very beautiful because of you. Because of you. Thank you very much. Everybody take a bow. Yerba Buena Gardens, please give it up for these beautiful artists. Give it up for the band. Give it up for the Curtis family. Give it up for Miss Dorothy Morrison. The choir. Please give it up for Maestro Curtis. Let these beautiful artists hear your joy. I got to go, I'm fading. This song of triumph, thank you so, so very, very much. One more time for all these musicians, for all of the people that made this possible. We want to thank the Community Music Center and the Yerba Buena organization. This would not have happened without that collaboration and the grant that the Community Music Center went out and got for us to be able to do this. We want to give thanks to all of those organizations. Thank you so much. One more time for the Community Music Center. Centennial 100 years. Please go check out their table, pick up a program, take it home with you. Follow the Curtis family, Maestro Curtis. See what is happening with this project because as he said, it is just one part of an ongoing project and we are so grateful that you were here today to share this with us. Also go check out our info table. We have a full summer of programs and if you'd like to support the Yerba Buena Gardens Festival and everything that we do to support free music in this park, please make a donation. We're coming around with orange buckets. Every little bit helps. We so appreciate your giving if you can. We also have a survey that is a wonderful way to give back. It takes only five minutes and you can let us know what you thought about today's program and all of the programs that we do here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, and all of the people in the gardens, one more time, can we give it up for Maestro Curtis, the Curtis family, and all these wonderful artists? We are bringing more oh music. Oh my God. <laughs> 
We are bringing more music, more art, more dance, more theater to this stage all summer long. So please check it out, ybgfestival.org, for the upcoming events. Our kickoff is on May 7th, right here, Saturday, May 7th, at 1 p.m. with an uh, opening set at 12.30. We've got a whole summer of music for you. So please check us out, ybgfestival.org. Please check out the CMC at their website. And Maestro's got one more thing to say. Just want to thank our support team, our managers, who's here, who came up on stage, Johnny and Claudette Staten. I want to thank my, thank my student, Colleen, for coming out, who supports us and helps us. I want to thank the photographer who always comes out to all of the events, and fellow martial artists. We go way back. <laughs> uh, he has been a part of the San Francisco community for a very long time. Mr. Johnny Burrell, and yeah, and then I want to thank the Strobel family. Where are you? Raise your hand. Who, who came here from Vallejo, and the guitar that you saw, my daughter Kiki playing, was donated by her superb husband, who's transitioned. Who, two years today, he left us. And he left a legacy with the Curtis family in the information that he left us, in the, the large library. He championed black music. And we want to give him a good shout out. His name is Douglas Strobel and the Strobel family. Yes. I want to thank Renee, who is, and Ms. Johnson, who are our big fan, part of our big fan club. In fact, when we were on, and, our, and the godparents of our children who are here as well, um, Susie Tyner and whoever else is here, and I want to thank, um, these people have been our fan club for a long time when we were at McKinley, our children were at McKinley, and they came all, to L, all the way to LA when we were on America's Got Talent. They were our, they were our fan club in the fake audience. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that during COVID, part of that audience was fake, but they were real. Thank you. Follow us online. Follow our Instagram at the Curtis Family C Notes. Facebook and YouTube. And TikTok. And Twitch. Thank you, Christina. Lot of love, lot of love. One more time. Give it up. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks. May 7th is our kickoff. Follow all of these musicians online, and we'll see you then.